In the first part, we will study about the nutrition in plants. The green plants are the only factories that produce food for all living organisms. It is because they perform the wonderful activity known as photosynthesis. No other organism on earth other than the green plants can perform this beautiful function of photosynthesis. They are the real kitchens in the world. If humans are able to imitate this process of photosynthesis, then all problems in the world is solved. We are not able to do this work in the laboratories and are today depending on the green plants for our food. The process of photosynthesis, as you learned in your smaller classes, is the process of preparing of food by the green plants in the presence of sunlight, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, water and minerals. Now briefly, we can just list the steps of photosynthesis as the first one, sun Light's energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll molecule. The second step is conversion of light energy into chemical energy by splitting of water molecule. And the third step is reduction of carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. These are the main three steps which are very important to remember. And which is the site of this process? is the chloroplast and name of the pigment involved is chlorophyll. We shall look into these factors individually. Chlorophyll is one of the major pigment which is present only in the green plants which is involved in the process of photosynthesis. Let us look into the plant and find out where exactly this chlorophyll is located in the plant. This is the leaf. The leaf section is cut into a very small piece and then magnified to this portion. Now this magnified portion shows you what is inside the leaf. There is the upper epidermis, the palisite cells below that, the mesophyll cells and the lower epidermis. The upper epidermis and the lower epidermis enclose structures in between which is all filled with this chloroplast. This is another view of the upper epidermis epidermis, lower epidermis and the cells in between them. Now if one single chloroplast is taken and magnified, this is the structure you get. It is like the Cadbury's gem shape, discoid in shape. The chloroplast is a double membraned organelle. There is an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Inside these are stacks which are called as thylakoids. It is inside these thylakoids that are filled with the chlorophyll pigment. The base of the thylakoid is called as the stroma. The next factor is presence of carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis. Now, stomata is the structure which is involved in exchange of gases. Stomata are tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves which exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen. There are sometimes present stomata on the roots and also the stems. Now, a very important factor is that the plants try to hide their stomata because through stomata there is a tendency of removal of water from the plants. So in the plants 
this stomata is usually hidden or they are shrunken. Now let us look into the structure of the stomata. Stomata are more present on the lower epidermis of the leaf because the leaf doesn't want to lose pieces of water into the atmosphere. So they hide the stomata on the lower epidermis of the leaf. This stomata has got an opening just called as the stomatal aperture. On either side of the stomatal aperture are present two bean shaped cells which are called as the guard cells. The guard cells contain an outer wall and an inner wall. The inner wall is thicker than the outer wall. There are many number of chloroplasts present in this stomata. There are epidermal cells surrounding the stomata. Now this is a view of the stomata inside the microscope. A magnified view of the stomatal structure in the microscope. This is the section of epidermal peel as seen under the microscope. So this is all the epidermal cells and this is the stomatal aperture. Some are closed, some are open and then you have the kidney shaped cells or bean shaped cells which are called as the guard cells. Now children, this is your first experiment in biology, the study of stomata. The aim runs us to prepare the temporary amount of leaf peel to show stomata. Materials required are slide, water, leaf of balsam. Balsam is, it is known as kashitumba in Malayalam. Microscope, needle, forcep, saffron and stain, etc. Now, a, a very thin epidermal peel of the leaf is taken, it is stained with saffron and stain and placed under the microscope for observation purpose. You will find this structure under the microscope. The picture above is the diagrammatic version of the stomata. So this is the structure that you see under the microscope. Some of them are open stomatal aperture, some of them are closed stomatal aperture. Now how does the stomata open and close? The plant tries to close the stomata so that there is no escape of water through the tiny pores. But the opening of stomata is necessary for exchange of gases. So how does the stomata open and close? When water flows into the stomatal guard cells from the surrounding they become thick, bulgy, turgid and cause it to just arch creating a hole in the center and when the water moves out of the guard cell when it moves out of the guard cell it becomes flaccid and it closes this is the process of opening and closing of the stomata. So this observation has to be recorded in your class workbook and also parallelly written down in your record notebook. So if you have any doubts please post it in the streaming session or in your class WhatsApp group. Thank you for patient listening.